Hey, welcome to Ones and Zeros. My name's Ben, and today we're going to be doing the first video in a bit of a debugging series. Um, just looking at some different techniques and various tools and approaches that you can use to help make your life a bit easier when working with STM32 devices and with the Cube IDE in general. So basically what I want to do for this first video is just a short one just as far as sort of project management um, and some of the little quirks and things that you may come across with the IDE itself when you're going through and setting up projects or copying a project so you can try out something a bit different with it and things like that. So some of this might be fairly self-evident or stuff that you know already. So um, it is fairly basic stuff, um, but it is stuff that I find does make things quite a bit easier. I'm um, just working on a bunch of different projects, especially with the Quartz Art code base spanning across multiple different device families and things like that as well. So making sure the stream is working, looks like it's behaving itself. So one of the first things, if I jump to my desktop, at the moment, we can see um, this is kind of how my desktop's arranged on all three of the computers that are used for coding. Um, this is one of the main ones that I use at the moment, uh, mostly because this computer is focusing on a lot of the Quartz Arc stuff that's going up on GitHub that we're using for the streams. Um, but a lot of the stuff that um, I'm working on at the moment is what's going to be on my desktop. So essentially, if it's on my desktop, it's either something that is important that I want to be able to refer to really quickly. So things like data sheets, um, some of my old code libraries, things like that, which is pretty much all of this stuff up here. And then down here, these are all basically a bunch of things that I'm just testing or trying out that might be variations of a particular element of a code base or other stuff like that. So making sure that there's you've got nothing there that you don't need to have there at a glance can be really useful. And again, everyone's different. Everyone likes to arrange stuff differently. So my recommendation is find something that works for you and stick with it because then if it becomes almost muscle memory for your brain it's going to make your life so much easier um, other things like using tools like github and things like that can be also really useful especially being able to roll back through various iterations of the code um, but you can also take the approach that I used to take if we jump onto one of my backup drives and take a look at some of my older code. Um, we can see this is um, an extension of what was known as my Clouds Edge um, software that I was working on, which spans across STM32 devices and ESP32 devices and it's been used for a couple of different projects. But we can see straight away in here, I've got all of the data sheets and documentations, various things that I need for that particular project, all organized in that one folder. And then if we jump into the actual software, um, we've got in here all of the various projects, um, the ESP32 ones, as well as the workspace for Cube IDE. Um, as well as an incrementals folder. So basically every time I hit a particular milestone or got a particular thing working um, straight away I was creating an incremental backup of that and it does take up a little bit of storage space when you start having quite a lot of them like this um, but again if you need to be able to jump back to something that you've done previously or if the particular code that you've just written over the last couple of hours you've messed it up and for some reason it's not working and you can't figure out why Sometimes being able to take a copy of an older version of the code and sort of step backwards a bit, have a bit of another perspective can really save save your butt. So I, to me, I, I find that has, has been super useful. Um, other things like I mentioned as far as data sheets and stuff like that, if we jump into this folder here we can see basically all the data sheets for any of the devices that I use regularly or am planning to use are basically sitting in this folder. Um, all of the ones for all of the various STM32 devices that I work with um, all good to go straight away so that I, I can grab those at a moment's notice. I don't need to go doing a Google search or anything like that for them. 
Um, again, little things that'll make your life easier, as well as, like I said, keeping copies of a bunch of your older code um, handy so that if you do need to refer back to something you've done previously, um, whether you're gonna copy and paste it or refactor it or basically rewrite it from scratch referring back to that old code, having that there makes life really, really useful. Um, again, you'll save yourself a lot of time with not having to reinvent the wheel a bunch of times over and over again. Um, one of the other things that I find is there is a couple of little quirks with the Cube IDE that can be a little bit of a pain. Um, and I've kind of gotten used to them now, but they did bug me a bit initially when I didn't really know what was going on. So say for example, if this particular project, um, which is actually a brand new USB stack that I'm creating for STM32 devices. Um, this is just some of the test code for it. So that will actually be coming up in some of the um, STM32 videos that we're doing. Um, but aside from that, say if I wanna create a copy of this, if we go in here, this is basically the workspace folder. You're gonna have the project folder and the metadata folder for basically anything that you've got. Um, for any of the STM32 projects. If we just create a new folder, we'll just call this one test. We're gonna throw this guy away anyway. We'll open that one up. Now I could grab both of these guys and copy them both across. Um, however, I find sometimes you will actually run into issues when you do that. I'd recommend just copying across just the project folder and leaving the metadata folder there. The reason for that is because sometimes Cube ID can get a little bit confused with referring back to the files that are still sitting in this original folder rather than the ones sitting in the new folder that or the new workspace that you've created. So in this case, if we jump into Cube IDE and we're going to point it at the new directory that we've created, see if I can find that one. We'll select that as our workspace folder. Now, because the metadata is not there, it's probably not gonna show us any projects showing up straight away. And so you'll either get the, the welcome screen or whatever there. We can close that guy and go to import projects, go into general, We'll go to existing projects into workspace. We'll point it at our new workspace folder. So we'll make sure it's definitely looking at the correct one. Select folder. It's gonna pick up the project that we've copied across and we'll tell it to import that one. And straight away, um, you're gonna solve yourself potentially a whole bunch of headaches moving forward with that. Um, the other thing that I highly recommend when you do copy it across. Again, it can just save certain headaches down the road is the first thing that I like to do is actually tell it to go through and clean that code. Um, so basically it recompile everything in that code base from scratch. Um, you also find sometimes you might come across a weird bug that you might be having or something might be working correctly. Um, sometimes it may not necessarily be the code sometimes going through and getting it to do a clean will actually solve the problem. And I find it's only a small percentage, maybe less than 5% of the, the particular issues or bugs that I'm coming across will be that sort of thing. Um, but if it's, especially if it's a bit of a weird bug that just doesn't make sense, it's worth giving that a shot because it, it can, in all seriousness, sometimes be a major time saver if that turns out to be the issue. And it has happened on enough times that even doing the code clean when you copying a project across, definitely worth giving it a shot. So that's kind of the approach that I like to take with that. Um, now across this series, we're gonna be taking a look at a bunch of different debugging techniques, um, everything from using LEDs and using LEDs to signal different things in different ways so that you can see at a glance what a device is doing. Um, you'll notice across um, some of the videos, I heavily use the virtual COM port over ST-Link quite regularly, because again, it can be a really handy way to see at a glance whether or not something is behaving or not. 
um, and can be quite a useful tool. But we're also going to dive into the actual debugger itself and how to use that, stepping through code, how to use it to be able to see what particular peripherals and things are doing, um, what particular data looks like at any point in time as you're running through code. And by combining all of those tools together, it gives you a pretty powerful arsenal to be able to see multiple different perspectives on an issue because the more information you've got on a particular issue, the easier it's going to be to be able to find it and then solve it. So that's kind of all I've got for this first video. So like I said, just a few simple tips and tricks. The other thing that I'll leave you with is backups are super important and not just from spending a bunch of time working with code over the years, but also um, in some of the time that I've spent working in tech support for some pretty big places. Um, if you've got any information that's important to you, especially if it's code that you've put a lot of time into, don't just have one copy of it. Make sure that you have multiple copies of it. I typically will keep copies of most of my important code across multiple computers, across multiple backup drives, as well as having cloud saves. And I do that as a religious thing. It's like that's the last step at the end of the day when I finish coding for the day is I go through, make backups to all of the backup drives, copy stuff across to the other computers, make sure that things are getting pushed to Git, so that I've also got that copy in the cloud as well as using other cloud services for backups as well because there's nothing worse than spending a whole bunch of time on something and then losing it um, for whatever reason whether you've got a hardware failure or just through bad luck or clicking the wrong thing or whatever even things like if we wanted to refresh this project and we tell it to delete it and we accidentally tell it to d delete the project contents if we don't have a backup of that and we click OK, that's gone and we've lost it. And that could be, you know, a couple of hours of work. So seriously, make sure you back your stuff up. Um, back it up across multiple different types of devices. Get yourself an external hard drive and a USB stick and some sort of cloud storage. Back your stuff up. Um, it will really save you in the long run. So hope you found that useful and hope it helps you with your journey with coding moving forward makes life a bit easier for you um and yeah see you next time with some more debugging techniques thanks for watching